This presentation will demonstrate the appropriate technique for the fixation of a complex mid-face fracture with 1.3 and 1.5 adaption plates. The trauma has caused fractures at the Lefort 1, 2, and 3 levels with bilateral avulsion of the zygomatico-maxillary complex and a multifragmental naso-orbital ethmoid fracture. The objectives of the exercise are to understand the importance of correct anatomical reduction of the facial buttresses to reproduce the original width, height, and projection of the mid-face. The correct sequence of reduction of the multifragmental mid-face fractures, including the orbit, and the importance of achieving correct occlusion. The mid-face has six main vertical buttresses. They are the two nasal frontal, the two lateral zygomatic, and the two pterygomaxillary buttresses. Reconstruction of the zygomatic arch determines the projections and the width of the face. Repair of the vertical facial buttresses restores vertical height and resistance to occlusal forces. The exception is the pterygomaxillary buttresses, which cannot be plated. The radiological diagnosis includes a CT in the axial, coronal, and ideally parasagittal plane, since Lefort fractures may be hard to identify using axial cuts alone. Depending on whether the mandible is intact or not, the MMF may be applied at various stages of the procedure. The mandible on this model is intact, so MMF using Ernst ligatures is placed first. The correct sequence to fix this fracture is composed of five steps. Fixation of the zygomatico frontal suture, fixation of the zygomatic arch, plating of the inferior orbital aperture and nasal frontal fracture, fixation of the maxillary buttresses, and, if needed, orbital floor reconstruction. The instruments needed are the plate cutters, two bending pliers. For 1.3 mm screws, the 1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop and the 1.3 screwdriver shaft with holding sleeve and handle. For 1.5 mm screws, the 1.1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop and the 1.5 screwdriver shaft with holding sleeve and handle. Fixation of the zygomatical frontal suture. The procedure begins with reduction of the zygomatical frontal fracture and the application of a 5 hole 1.3 adaption plate. The plate is contoured with the bending pliers and is positioned so that a single screw is placed on each side of the fracture at this stage. The first hole is drilled next to the fracture line in the zygoma using a 1 mm drill. A 6 mm long 1.3 mm screw is inserted. The second hole is drilled in the first plate hole cranial to the fracture line. Another 6 mm long 1.3 mm screw is inserted. These two screws provide some stability and allow the zygomatic arch and orbital aperture to be reduced. The two additional screws are placed on either side of the plate after the other fractures have been fixed. The hole over the fracture line is not used. Fixation of the zygomatic arch. The next step is fixation of the zygomatic arch, which is essential to establish the correct anterior-posterior projection and the width of the face. A straight five-hole 1.5 adaption plate is used for this simple fracture. However, the zygomatic arch is often comminuted which would require a longer plate. Due to the anatomical form of the arch, pre-bending of the plate is usually not necessary. The first hole is drilled next to the fracture line in the zygomatic portion, 
with a 1.1 mm drill bit with 6 mm stop. A 6 mm long 1.5 mm screw is inserted. Another screw is inserted on the opposite side of the fracture line. Traction on the plate can be used to achieve a better reduction of the zygomatic arch. Two more screws are inserted, one on each side of the fracture line. Confirmation of the correct three-dimensional reduction of the zygoma is made by an intraorbital examination of the lateral orbital wall. It's important to make sure that there's no step-off between the greater wing of the sphenoid and the zygoma. During reduction of the zygoma, the alignment of the lateral orbital wall should be reconfirmed. If the alignment is correct, the two remaining screws are now placed in the first plate. The fixation of the zygomatic complex is repeated on the opposite side of the face, with a 1.3 plate placed at the zygomatical frontal fracture and a 1.5 plate on the zygomatic arch. Plating of the nasal frontal and the inferior orbital rim fracture. Plating of the right orbital aperture will be completed with reduction of the medial maxillary nasal segment. The nasal frontal and the inferior orbital rim fracture plating is done with 1.3 plates. A minimum of two screws are inserted on each side of the fractures. The reconstruction of the left orbital rim starts with anatomical realignment of the fractures. 1.3 plates are placed at the inferior orbital rim, the nasal frontal fracture, and the nasal maxillary process. An inverted 1.3 Y plate is used for further reduction and stability of the nasal skeleton. Fixation of maxillary buttresses. If the MMF was not applied earlier, it must be applied now. The Lefour 1 fracture is stabilized with 1.5 L plates. The fracture is reduced and fixed with plates along the nasal buttresses. When placing the caudal screws, the tooth roots must be avoided. The fixation is finished with two more plates at the zygomatico maxillary buttresses. The bone here is considerably stronger than it is over the maxillary sinus. Following reduction at the Lefort 1 level, the MMF is removed and the occlusion is checked. This step completes the plating of the basic framework of the mid-face. The objectives of this exercise have been to understand three points. The importance of correct anatomical reduction of the facial buttresses to achieve the original width, height, and projection of the midface. The correct sequence for reducing a multifragmental midface fracture. And the importance of achieving correct occlusion. Here are the main steps again. Fixation of the zygomatico frontal suture and fixation of the zygomatic arch. Plating of the inferior orbital aperture and nasal frontal fracture and fixation of the maxillary buttresses. In case of an orbital wall defect, reconstruction could be necessary. This model can be used for an orbital floor mesh plate, also known as a fan plate to repair a left medial orbital floor fracture. The defect has been marked on the model. The cutter for strut and mesh plates is needed. The radial design of the plate 
fits the conical shape of the orbit and can be cut to size. The orbital floor mesh plate is designed to allow fixation to the orbital rim. If an orbital rim plate has already been placed, the mesh plate can be cut accordingly. All sharp edges are trimmed, and soft tissues are properly retracted to ensure that they are not trapped. It is important to use a large enough plate to span the edges of the orbit, with particular care taken to span the posterior ledge of the orbit. After the posterior ledge is spanned, the orbital mesh plate requires only minimal screw placement.